Hey everybody, Mike from Big Mike's Motor Pool here. If you can't tell, it's freaking cold out. When they found Carbone in the meat truck, he was frozen so stiff it took them two days to thaw him out for the autopsy. Not my favorite time of the year. But that doesn't stop me from getting work done because it has to get done. There's, you know, No one's going to do it if I don't. So today I want to show you something I'm working on with the forklift. Uh, I had uh, over the last weekend did some work to this thing. Uh, just basic service stuff, grease, oil change, whatever. And I had a, a choke cable problem. So I went ahead and replaced this choke cable. And the choke cable that came isn't... Um, in factory it's a little different it's some universal china bomb thing but it works uh, the only problem is it doesn't stick like it should like the old one you, you could pull it out and it would stay put you know so you could walk away from the machine while it was warming up um, when that one broke i rigged up um, a cable that was uh, it used to be a throttle cable from a deuce and i just stuck it through the side of the machine and you know it um it worked it pulled something and moved something else and it had choke but it was flopping around and it usually landed by my feet and got stuck or kicked or pulled and it wasn't good so i wanted to put something back in its original place so let me show you what i got going on here so here is the new choke cable you know you pull it up goes right down pull it up right down which that's not good this machine it takes a little while to warm up i mean it's it, it loves choke it's probably something i have to do to an adjustment but it things old and it runs good but it, it just likes choke uh, half the time the choke stays on a little bit once it is running and i drive it around like that just because it runs better sometimes um so i had to figure something out to keep that from falling over so i came up with this idea So there's three different sizes. I got the long one, the medium one, and the short one. Full choke. I ended up using the long one. Just pull the choke lever up, shove it in. Just like that. It stays put just because the tension from the linkage has a little spring on it. And then, you know, you start it up and you can walk away for a minute, come back. And then swap into the next size. And this one is the one that would warm the machine up most. Full choke like that, it, this thing just doesn't uh, doesn't need for very long. Uh, half the time you pull a full choke, get it to kick over, and then you let off and bring it down some, and it was good. The, the tiniest one, that's for, you know a few minutes in. But this is one, I, I, I'll leave this in here sometimes and drive around just because it gives it just enough to run the best. But, um, so that's uh, my uh, fix for that. You know, nothing serious, just something stupid and simple. I didn't even video it, uh, the manufacturer part of it, because it wasn't really worth watching. It was just me drilling a hole in a rod on a lathe, which that's pretty boring. But uh, there's something else I want to show you while we're talking about the tow motor. And uh, it's not the tow motor itself. Sorry about the sun, it sucks over here. But there she is, that's my uh, tow motor. It's the ramp I use to work on the tow motor. Oh man, look at this, this is a real gem. Oh yeah. You guys are probably getting moist watching this right now. Mmm, it's so moist. So here we go, look at that. That is the most awesome set of car ramps you've probably ever seen, but they're made to hold that 8,000 pound forklift sitting over there. Yeah, so, you know, working on this thing and any heavy equipment machinery, especially forklifts, though, it's, it's downright dangerous to have this thing jacked up on jacks. It is such a wonky machine. It's hard to jack up and it's not really meant for floor jacks and such. So, I built this handy ramp. You may notice the ramp. Why is my, my material got a bunch of holes in it? Well, that's because the material is truck frames. 
Yep, when I started this ramp, that's what it looked like. Stripped out truck. Now, I used some of a truck like that. It was a two and a half ton army truck, deuce and a half. Uh, the deuce and a half is what the legs are made of because I didn't have, at the time, much of that material. But the top ramp is a five ton truck. It's about the same thickness material, but it's a little wider. And it worked out good because that was the width that it really needed to be for the tires. The, the stuff from the two and a half ton truck would have been a little bit tight. But um, I believe this is about 13 feet on the tops and the, uh, the ramp coming up together on each side. And um, with all the holes in it, you can see uh, my ill attempt of traction. Uh, it was just to fire some bolts into the empty holes. These are just some scrap bolts I had. But it still doesn't work. This machine, it just doesn't have the power to climb this incline. And that doesn't look like much of an incline. It's, I have no clue what it is in degrees. But it's less than two feet. I think I made these stand-ups 21 inches, if I remember. Maybe I'm wrong there. I have to double check. But You pretty much got to bomb this ramp when you uh, try to drive up it. It's a little dangerous. So now I, uh, I did it last time. The first time I used it was about a year ago after I got done building it. And I was able to, you know, come at this thing flying and, and just, you know, hit it hard enough to go up it. But the problem with that is the tires are about the width of the ramps. They're a little bit smaller. And you try to go up the damn thing and it's, you're ready to fall off. And then trying to hit it you can hardly see and then the back tires still have to get on there so there's a lot of a lot of opportunity to fall off this thing and i'm not trying to have this forklift crawl fall off and crush me and kill me it wouldn't be fun uh, so what i did this time i tried going up the ramps like two or three times and i said you know i'm hell with this i'm done it's too dangerous i ended up to top of my container the two uh tie points that are on these for picking them up and securing them i ran a big tow chain i had through each side of this and then i had it drooping down about halfway down i put a snatch block on it and then i pulled the tan deuce and a half that's over there i drove that up into the side here on an angle and just pointed it toward the door and used a winch to pull the machine up and, and it was it was fairly effortless it was really really nice and every time i do this now i'll be doing it that way So the uh, ramp here, it's got a few few things. You may be wondering why there's these long standouts on the side. Um, that does help when, when you're working on it, because this thing's pretty high up. You, you try to work on a machine when it's sitting on here, and it, it's awkward. So I, I throw a board or something on that, use it as a little uh, step. But the main reason that's there is you can see this tube is a hitch receiver tube. I made this ramp adjustable because I got multiple machines and if I ever sell it, it'll be able to fit anyone who uh, who would want it. And I, I tell you, I could probably sell this thing right now for $800, maybe $1,000 just because of what it is and what it's, you know, set up for. But um, yes, this thing's fully adjustable. Uh, I think I got it set at 43 inches now. I can't remember how close it goes, but I believe it was five foot I made it that it'll extend out to if I want to get something with five foot wide track with. So that's pretty cool. The ramps themselves here are not completely secured to the thing, uh, to the main uh, frame, so you can take them off. This bolt up top on each side is just a pin. It's a bolt and a nut, and I don't tighten them because it'll... If there's a differentiation in the ground level from one end to the other, you know, there's no stress being put on anything. It just sort of sits there and that holds it. This side, I got to do a little bit of repair work to that hole. Um, there was a large hole for a bulkhead fitting or something in this frame when I put it together. And uh, that one there, uh, the torched out section is where the bolt should be. I got to put a little metal in there and close up that bulkhead hole. Uh, attaching these, you can see made a little step 
that sits on. Uh, I believe it's quarter inch and three eighths material or five sixteenths and something like that. But it's pretty strong. It's not going to come off. When the machine's up on here, I set it up so all the weight is pretty much dead on top of these um, stand-up sections. You know, the front wheels are coming up and um, the tire is definitely on top of that. And the same thing with the rear. The rear tire is laying on there. Um, so there's no weight in the middle where it's unsupported. And I have a little uh, crisscross bracing in there. I only did uh, two sections on each one. You know, some folks are going to say, you need to put more, or you're going to fall, it's going to break. The thing is not the Eiffel Tower. That's the bottom line. And it doesn't need all that bracing because it's not going to fall. It's welded inside and out, top and bottom. That's a 3 8 plate on the bottom, so it's not going anywhere. That was more just to keep the plate from bending at the bottom should the uh, legs try to wiggle a little bit. Now up front I got uh, some stoppers. They, uh, just pieces of angle. I think uh, it's what they call brick shelf. I, know, I got it somewhere for free. It was primed up steel and there, I got a whole bunch of it and it all looks the same. I cut the uh, corners just in case I fall because I'm top heavy. I want to land on a sharp point. And, uh, that's really about it for this thing. You know, uh, I may make some design changes to it later and add some things like thought about, uh, adding some kind of sliding, um, like a sliding shelf on the inside that I could, you know, put jacks on or something if I had to, or an oil drain pan. But I mean, for now, I just use some, uh, some wood to, uh, crib up some stuff if I got to jack the machine up. Cause like, like this, uh, last weekend I had the machine here and I had all the wood blocks back here and I jacked up the back end of it so I could have the wheels turned and, and, you know, moving back and forth. I was working on the steering and greasing it and wanted to make sure I had grease everywhere because terrible at maintenance and i have never greased this forklift in the oh man i don't know seven eight years i've owned it and i'm terrible terrible forklift father and the same thing up front i had to jack the front up to uh spin the one front wheel so i can get a u-joint where i needed it so i could uh, grease that but yeah this is about it for the forklift uh, stand and you know i wanted to show you this because i'm getting ready to you know put it away and move it um we're about to get some snow, and I want to make sure I uh, can clean up my little work area here enough to run the plow through and clean it so I'm not dealing with ice for the next six months. I really hate winter. You know, it's so terrible, and it's not even that bad here. I don't know how you people in Alaska and freaking Norway and wherever else it's freaking cold out all year long deal with it. But, yeah, so that's a little quick video on uh, some forklift stuff. If you have any questions about this ramp and you want to know uh, any specifics that I did or didn't do or what I would change and do later, uh, feel free to ask. Unfortunately, back then I wasn't um, wasn't making videos when I built this. It would have been a pretty decent video. But I'm going to throw some pictures up that I have uh, here in the end that shows you some of the build process. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.